Okay, everybody. Hello there. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to our top five anticipated movies for fall winter 2022. It's already that time where we are already at the end of the year. So yeah, we're going to be talking about the movies we're most looking forward to this season. And of course, as always, I have my special guest right here, me amigos right here. And of course, I'm going to introduce to everyone one by one, starting off with Timothy Anderson. Hold up. What? I thought it wasn't. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, guys. Oh, I'm going by the order I see on my screen, so I don't throw myself off. Okay. All right. Um, hello, guys. My name is Timothy Anderson. I'm happy to be another and another one of these. Uh, second one this year. So let's go. It's a me, a Mario. Next one up is Jordan Farrell. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, talking about movies that haven't been delayed. Um, third one's Charm, and what fucking day is it? <laughs> I started first. Uh, Next one up okay. we got is Henry Ewing. We're back, baby. Crazy that the year's already over, but movies keep coming out, so we keep anticipating them. So, yeah. Next one up we got is Film Fanal 599. Hi, how do you how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Give me your babies. How, how do you okay. do? How, how do you do all? Okay. Anyways, but no. Um. Yeah, I'm excited to be on here as always. Um. I always love doing these videos. Uh. You know, these videos are some of the uh biggest highlights of my year. And um, where are we at the fall one already? Um. Feels like just yesterday. Whoever is crumpling that, I'm going to kick in the face. Anyways, um, and um, but um, yeah, uh, I can't believe we're already at the last one already of the year. Um, it feels like just yesterday we did the spring one. So, um, but yeah, um, I'm excited to uh, uh, share my list and uh, yeah. Next one up we got is Andrew Hayes, aka the Duck. I like movies. More like the that fuck. is all. Next one up is Diego Coya. Hey everyone. Uh, first off, thanks Tony for having me on here. I'm excited to be here. I'm always excited for the fall movie season. This season looks promising, and um, can't wait to share my list with you guys. And for the grand finale of introductions, we got Violet Leplan. Hello, everyone. I am unfortunately here. I'm really sorry, but I am here, so there's nothing you can do about it, lol. Um, thank you for having me on, Tony. Uh, as usual, uh, this has uh, this is definitely, by far, my most anticipated top five video that we have done, and I've been on a lot of them. I've been on them since 2015, so this is uh, fun, exciting, and I'm glad to be with all of you amazing, beautiful people, except for film fan. Anyways, let's get going. Hey, how about you go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> I just sat on my nuts. And now we're the power That's rangers. Nice. Never mind. There you go. That's better. Okay, of course, we all know the drill at this point. Before we get into our top five, we are going to talk about our honorable mentions for my honorable mentions i got 10 of them i have baby lawn puss in boots the last wish the fablemans enola holmes 2 weird the al yankovic story for guilty pleasure reason lyle lyle crocodile that looks Cro <laughs> that looked absolutely incredible <laughs> yummy um Amsterdam, Wendell Wild, About Time, uh, five years I've been hearing about this movie, excited for it to finally come out, Clerks 3, and just missing my top five, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. All right, so for my honorable mentions, I got Gaudy, Cats, <laughs> Battlefield Earth, The Emoji Movie, <laughs> Black Adam, <laughs> Glass Onion, Enola Holmes 2, Lyle Lyle Crocodile, and the most important honorable mention on here, After Ever Happy. 
Because MK packs. God. At least what? you didn't say smile. Oh, and smile. Damn, that was actually on here too. <laughs> so for my honorable mentions, I have seven hundred movies. Just kidding. Oh, I shit. have. <laughs> I have a uh, Clerks three, Blonde, <clears throat> The Greatest Beer Run Ever, Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans, Strange World, Window and Wild, My Father's Dragon. And Shazam Fury of the Gods at Wait. That got delayed. Do 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 My father's dragging these nuts. Oh, <laughs> 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 Alright, so there's a lot of stuff coming out, so I actually made the top ten, but first I'm going to rush through these honorable mentions. So, in release order, we got Clerks 3, Do Revenge, Moon Age Daydream, See How They Run, Black Adam, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, The Sun, The Menu, Bones and All, Strange World, Empire of Light, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, <clears throat> The Whale, and then at number 10, I have The Banshees of Anishirin in Bruges Reunion. Number 9 is White Noise, Marriage Story Follow-Up, the same director. Number 8 is Blonde with Ana de Armas as Marilyn Monroe. Number 7 is Pearl, the X prequel. And the one that came this close to making my top 5 that just missed it is a long-awaited sequel, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. So, yeah. Woo! Hi. Um, I actually have three honorable mentions uh, because there was a, there was a, there was a few movies I forgot I forgot I forgot for this list. But here we fucking go. Um, first hand, I have uh, Dio. Uh, Dreamers never die. Uh, next up, I have uh, Babylon. Uh, I have um, shit. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna take the shit. I yes. never heard the movie shit. What's it about? Um, it's, about, it's, about the, it's about it's about it's about the shit emoji. It's um, about Patrick, me. Patrick Stewart's coming back to play him. <laughs> Glass Onion, uh, a Knives Out tale, and that's it. That's all I have. My honorable mentions are Blonde, Pearl, The Fablemans. I have Pearl on here twice for some reason, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and The Woman King. So, I have five honorable mentions. Um, the Woman King, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, The Whale, Bardo, and Pinocchio, the Guillermo del Toro one. Okay, look, look, I, I, yeah. I, I would say for a long time. Violent. This is gonna be, this, like, listen, y'all, there's multiple films and honorable mentions that, like, could have been in my, like, top three. Like, like just prepare yourself for this, okay? Okay, so... First off, we're gonna. I, I think these are. I put them in like release date order. The last one doesn't have a release date, but it might come out this year. We'll see. Anyway, so the first one I'm gonna shout out quickly because it comes on literally a few hours is the Kendrick Lamar We Cry Together short film. Um, it's a short film, so I'm counting that, so it should be good. Um, now for films that are coming out in theaters, uh, I'm just gonna go through most of these quickly. I might say something about a few of them. So here we go. Okay, so Barbarian, Clerks Free, Minaj Daydream, Blonde. Don't worry, darling, for the meme at this point. Uh, <laughs> Hocus Pocus 2, um, Triangle of Sadness, uh, Bardo, False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths, Decision to Leave, I Don't Care, Unironically, Lie Like Crocodile, looks absolutely incredible. Yes, um, let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm putting this one on here because my friend Sam told me I have to because, uh, he, because he just said I have to. Halloween ends, so thanks for that, Sam. Um <laughs> Wendell and uh, Wendell and Wind. You were so close to saying the right title, Violet. You were so close. Uh, that one I really want to put in my top five, uh, but it just didn't crack it. Uh, another one that I really want to put in my top five, but again, it's going to crack it. It's Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, then we got The Sun, uh, The Menu. Uh, this one, I really, this one is the one I want to put in my top five the most, but it just is, there's less five more I'm looking more looking forward to. The Whale. Uh, then we have Empire of Light. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, Glass Onion, Knives Out Mystery, 
uh, Broker, White Noise, and then the last one that does not have a release date, but it might be coming out because it's, like, done filming, and it's, like, I think already done, like, post-production, is a New Yorker's Lanthimos film called Four Things, which is, like, his version of, like, Frankenstein. Uh, so we'll see if that comes out or not, but hopefully it does. So, yeah, I'm really sorry for how many I have, but what, let's get it. Honestly, not bad. Not thank bad. You. Honestly, thank not you. bad. Thank not you. bad. Not bad, thank honestly. I thought, I thought it was going to be a lot worse, but not bad. Not bad, honestly. Okay, everyone. Now we all get into our top five for the season. So here we go. Look, I'm not trying to defend Shia LaBeouf. However, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jackson, no. Jackson, no. Uh, we have no idea where he is, by the way. He was supposed to join us, but he's probably... I was going to say, I guess he there. joined after all. I guess so. So, kicking off my number five, it is indeed Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, initially, this is one I personally felt more lukewarm on. Uh, just because I just wasn't really sure how it was going to really go. But that's why I wanted to wait for a trailer. And then obviously the trailer dropped around, you know, just last month. At least as we're recording this last month in July. Um, and yeah, you know, a lot of people have been saying it's just a very emotional trailer. Obviously, it looks like they're going to really pay this massive tribute to not just T'Challa, but Chadwick Boseman, who uh, actually, you know, recently it marked the two year anniversary since he passed away you know unfortunately obviously because of how much he has truly embodied the character it's just going to be something that you can't help be just very emotional about and everyone in the cast looks like they're going to do a really great job in their roles the cinematography too just really gorgeous just Definitely, I think, one of the more gorgeously shot MCU movies just based off of the trailer. And, of course, you have Ryan Coogler back, which is really cool. How the spectacle of the action looks in this one so far is just truly incredible. I know we only have, like, our one trailer, but, like, to be honest, that one trailer is honestly enough. And I know they still got to drop more trailers, but honestly, I would be fine if this was just, like, the only trailer that marvel drop to be honest because it's just enough to like just just get my butt into the theater but also just see how everyone just comes together to celebrate the loss of t'challa but also of course chadwick boseman because he really was just such an incredible talent a wonderful human being and it's supposed to be this movie in phase four as well so hopefully on that note it will end phase four on a really good note so that's why Black Panther Wakanda Forever is my number five. Okay, so my number five is A24's secretly filmed prequel to X, Pearl, which is a movie that originally wasn't in my top five, but now is because I fell in love watching, because uh, I fell in love with X. And this looks fantastic. Um, I can't wait to see uh, see Mia Goth back in this role, even though it's only been about seven months since X came out. Uh, it it looks uh, like a like it looks well directed. It looks beautiful. Um, I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Uh, I I can't wait. Ah, uh, George, just so you know, you're completely muted, my man. What the fuck? Son of a bitch. That wasn't, that wasn't fake. That wasn't fake. <laughs> no matter wow. what, something's always going to go wrong with Jordan's number five. <laughs> no matter I guess what. It's just going to be a trend for now on. <laughs> <laughs> but in here is my number five, which is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I honestly wasn't too hyped for the movie because of all the production drama and whatnot. But then that trailer came out and I was like crying like a motherfucker. It looks emotional. It looks like it's going to pay tribute to uh, the great Chadwick Boseman. I really felt like we're getting something new at the same time, especially expanding the world and we get to see Namor or Namor, how you pronounce him. Either way, I'm getting canceled either way. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, one tra- and I agree with you, Tony. One trailer is enough. Uh, that one trailer is good enough for me. No more trailers. We're going to get more trailers anyway, but yeah. All right. My number five is The Fablemans because Steven Spielberg is a great director, and this movie is supposed to be like somewhat autobiographical. So I'm interested to see how that goes. And the cast includes like. Michelle Williams and Paul Dano and Seth Rogen and also we're getting an appearance from Daddy David Keith Lynch and that is just wow so I'm very hyped to see that and I think it's gonna do very well so yeah it's my number five uh, uh okay my number five baby all right here, number five uh movie i did uh, i would not have expected to uh be on this list but um i can't lie i can't lie y'all that that teaser is getting me hyped that teaser is getting me hyped for this movie and that is avatar the way of the water why is it um, number five motherfucker hell yeah number five yeah bitch number five yeah number five avatar the way of the water this movie looks pretty great. I must admit, I, I think this movie looks really incredible. Um, I like the first Avatar movie. I think um, it's a really good film. Um, it's a really great spectacle, and you know, I, I definitely enjoy it a lot. It, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I'm definitely gonna rewatch it before seeing this one. But um, I'm going to be honest. Um, I lost interest in an Avatar sequel very, very, very long ago. So, um, so at, at this point, when when they finally were like, "All right, it's coming out," I'm like, "Do I even care at this point, honestly?" But I saw the trailer, and especially seeing it in theaters, I'm like, "Yeah, I, I'm very excited about this movie." Yeah, this movie looks incredible. Um, I think it, I, I think it looks visually stunning already from the trailer, um, and I just think this could be a really great film. Um, I'm definitely going to try and see it in theaters because I did not see the first Avatar um, in theaters, so I need to uh, recollect that and uh, try to see this one in theaters. Um, well, well, I have a chance op- coming up. Well, I was, I, was just about, I was just about to say, well, I do have a chance to see the first one in theaters now, but um, but uh, we, will, we, will, we will fix that even further with the second one. Um, it looks great. I'm very excited for it, and uh, yeah, comes as my number five. Um, my number five is Glass Onion. Um, I loved uh, the first one, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, obviously there was a lot of potential to tell a lot more stories with uh, uh, Daniel Craig's character, and uh, yeah, I'm sh- this uh, also has a great cast, and uh, just uh, yeah, excited for this one. So my number five is Avatar The Way of Water. Double nine, you're not alone. We have the same number five. Uh, so um, I thought the first one was great. I saw it in theaters when it came out. So I was actually in eighth grade. So it's crazy that it's coming out 13 years later. Um, I, I'm excited to go back to the world of Pandora. I think visually it looks absolutely spectacular. I love the teaser trailer, as I stated before. And um, I think it's going to be epic. It has to be a must watch in the IMAX screen because I, I go to IMAX theaters very often. And um, just watching that trail in IMAX, it really hits different. So um, we don't know too much about the story itself, but I'm really curious to see how the story is going to be. I think James Cameron had to create something special. It took him this long to make the sequel. So um, I'm really hyped for it. So Avatar The Way of Water is my number five. All righty. Okay, here we go, y'all. My top five. Uh, I think the order is, I think I got the order. So here we go. Fucking go, baby. Here we go. All right, so number five is Pinocchio, the Disney Plus. I'm joking. The Guerrero del Toro one. Uh, the Disney Plus one does not look that bad, in my opinion, actually. But this Del Toro one is the one that I am looking forward to very, very much so. Um, obviously I love Del Toro. And the thing about it that's interesting is like, I've always said that like, you know, especially like a film like Pan's Labyrinth, I always feel like that Del Toro, like, kind of like, like, I don't know how to like describe, but like, I always like describe like Pan's Labyrinth. It's, it's like a fairy tale, but it's like exposing like, sort of like the conventions of like how like a fairy tale, like 
can like manipulate people and like in his own like twisted like fantasy kind of way. Um, and seeing him adapt like a story like Pinocchio and seeing him put his own spin on it, I'm super interested in seeing that. And obviously, it's stop motion. I, I can't wait uh, for that. I'm I'm hopefully can see this. One. I'm hoping I can see this, I can see this one in theaters. Um, but it will be on Netflix if I'm not able to, which is obviously very exciting. Um, and the cast is fantastic. Um, and I'm really excited to see everyone in it, especially, uh, you know, good old Ewan McGregor. And, uh, yeah, no, so, uh, I'm really, really excited. Uh, and that is why it is my number five. Uh, so, yeah, All righty, everyone. Now we're going to get into our number four. Oh, I will. Ooh. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so my number four is going to be for the Disney animated movie Strange World. This world indeed does look strange, but I'm very fascinated by what the overall concept looks like. I really, really enjoy how they marketed the teaser for this movie. It's definitely different from how Disney has marketed their other movies. They really go really old school, especially with the beginning of the marketing, like with the whole Walt Disney proudly present. The animation looks really beautiful and you have really great voice cast in here too. I know Jake Gyllenhaal, he's the main uh, lead performance in this. And I actually didn't even know Jake Gyllenhaal was in this for a while until like very recently. But I do think it's cool that he's in this. And I think it's the first Disney animated film that he's done. So that's very exciting too. I'm looking forward to just seeing with my own eyes, like what this movie can deliver with this concept. And then of course, we also got in the voice cast, we got Alan Tudyk here too. Lucy Liu is in here as well. Dennis Quaid. It doesn't give you a whole lot, which I like. So I definitely hope it could be that way. And when it does come out, I could just hope it's something that'll be very exciting and just something that I'll definitely remember when I walk out of the theater. It's a movie that I get more excited about the more I watch the teaser, honestly. And that's honestly why it's my number four. It's strange, but definitely one I am so up for. Okay, so my number four is something that originally wouldn't be anywhere near my list. Uh, but just recently, I discovered that this was a thing. Uh, this is why we read kids, because my number four is the book at, or the film adaptation of My Best Friend's Exorcist, because this book is freaking fantastic, and I cannot wait to see how this translates into screen. Well, it suck, probably, but Christopher Landon's attached, so it's kind of got me a little bit hooked. Um, think of this like uh, the back of it kind of describes it uh, perfectly. It's like beaches which is a chick flick. I don't know if you guys have seen it meets the exorcist, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited to see how the movie translates. It's going on Amazon prime. So it's going to be free. Uh, and on that count, there's like 40 ET references. So I had to pull out the Blu-ray. I mean the 4k. So, um, I'm, I'm so excited to see how it translate. Uh, hopefully it's great. Hopefully it lives up to its source material uh because if it doesn't i'm probably gonna end up crying and i just i'm so tired of book adaptation sucking <sighs> well you know i'm pretty hungry uh tony um i'm hungry for that puss in boots the last wish what the wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, i've been looking forward to this sequel for a fucking decade you know i've been waiting for Puts and Puts 2 ever since I was like um, 12 years old and here I am a grown ass man with uh, with no life looking forward to a, a talking cat movie uh, starring Antonio Banderas and Sam Hayek and but all seriousness it looks cool I like the animation style they're going for that painting texture look and at the style um, Florence Pugh as the villain that's a, that's some bonus points for me um, and yeah, why is it going over so long? <laughs> <laughs> because my mouse wasn't moving at first, that's why. Wow, the mouse is a bitch. 
Right, Fuck you, Jerry. Boots is gonna eat it. All right, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Florence Pugh, my number four is Don't Worry, Darling. I know this film has gotten quite the reputation as of late, but I I really liked Booksmart. I saw that film in theaters three times, something I have not done before or since, and I've been looking forward to Olivia Wilde's follow-up since then, and Florence Pugh is a really good actress, and I think the trailers for this made it look like a really interesting thriller, and hopefully it's a good movie, because... If it's not, then uh oh, Warner Bros. Maybe. Alrighty, uh, my number four is uh, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Um, I think this looks uh, really great. Um, kind of like similar to others that have uh, mentioned this movie already on their list. Um, I was really worried. Um, especially with the um, mainly, I started to get worried with a lot of the production issues that were going on with this movie it literally sounded like hell but that trailer really did bring things around for me i think this looks really fantastic um i did um really love the first one a lot um i think that's a fantastic film and um uh, i'm ex i'm very curious and excited to see uh what they do with this sequel um honestly and um i think it looks beautiful um, already, it looks like one of the most beautifully shot films in the entire MCU. Um, I think this looks incredible. Um, I'm excited to see what direction they're going to go in, um, honestly. And I think it looks great. So, yeah, my number four, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. There's a spider on your bed. Oh, my God. Oh, man, I'm tired. Anyway, will... my number four is Don't Worry, Darling. Um, I don't really care about all the fucking stupid issues that are going on right now. Those are, like, whatever to me. Uh, I still think the movie looks pretty great. Um, I was a fan of her, uh, Olivia Wilde's last effort, Book Smart. Shout out to you, Caitlin Dever. Love you. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, I, I was excited for this, like, regardless on how the trailer looked, because of how much I did love Booksmart and how much I am a fan of Florence Pugh. And I do think Harry Styles is like a pretty good actor. I mean, I've only ever seen him act in uh, Dunkirk, but he was pretty good in that. And um, so I was like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll give him a, a chance to do something else, I guess. But uh, no, I think the trailer looks awesome. Um, uh, and I'm just fuck I'm fucking hyped for it. Like I think it looks incredible. Um again it's kind of a shame that all this like other shit that's going on with the movie. Uh but that's not really affecting my excitement for it. And um yeah, I, I hope uh I hope uh it turns out pretty good. So my number four is Glass Onion, a knives out mystery. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because, uh, well, there's no trailer. And to my knowledge, it's not a plot synopsis. I might be wrong. But in any case, uh, I love the first one. The first one was one of my favorite movies of 2019. So because of how much I love the first one, I am absolutely excited for the sequel. Ryan Johnson's coming back. And it's a new cast besides Daniel Craig. And the new cast is killer. So Knives Out 2, I think it's going to be one of those movies where the less you know going in, uh, the better it's going to be. Because the first one with the trailers, they kind of gave you a little bit of an idea of, of what it was going to be about. But I went to the movie not really knowing much. And I think that really benefited my experience with the first one. So I think it's going to be the same case with the second one. I I can't wait for the trailer to come out. I'm sure it's going to come out anytime uh, in September because the festivals start next month, um, next week. So um, I'm hyped for Knives Out 2. It's my number four. I think it's going to be another banger from Ryan Johnson. All righty. My number four is Ty West and Mia Goff's Pearl. Woo! All righty. I don't think any anyone who knows me is not surprised that X is, like, a, in my opinion, like a freaking masterpiece. I don't think anyone's surprised that I have that opinion. Um, and that is my favorite film of the year so far. 
Uh, and unfortunately, I did not see the trailer for this because I, when, like, when when I originally saw X, because I did not know that there was a, a post credit scene. So I heard about this movie uh, like like a week later, and I was like, wait, wh what's going on? But it, it's coming out. Uh, re it's coming out in in a few weeks as we're filming this. Uh, and I cannot wait. Uh, I'm very excited to see Mia Goff uh, play the Pearl character. Uh, and um, the trailers look just as wicked and just as... Like, Ty West has a very, like, specific, like, tone to his works. Like, it has a sort of, like, slow, like, eeriness to it while also having this, like, authentic, like, sense of, like, sort of just kind of like like i don't know how to describe it but just like this one like from the trailers the way it's looking like it has like the sort of like vintage like feel that like x had with embodying like 70s like horror and adult films and this one's like kind of like you know going back even further in the time and kind of embodying sort of like that like kind of like whimsical kind of feel at least with the trailers while still having like that wicked and like messed up tone because this movie like when you go you know if you go see it's gonna be pretty pretty messed up probably uh and um you know i can't wait uh and i'm i'm just i'm really excited that this universe is continuing all righty everybody now we're gonna get to our number three why not all wrongy oh yeah that's deep my number three is going to be blonde it's the movie on marilyn monroe it's a movie i've been honestly very interested in for the longest time especially ever since they casted anna de anmas as marilyn monroe i was like sign me up i'm all up for that she's a really terrific actress and she definitely looks like she's gonna embody marilyn monroe very well and then, of course the trailers have been dropping and i've just been honestly utterly blown away by the marketing honestly um the filmmaking by andrew dominic looks incredible um i love how he's changing the aspect ratios and even like the colors in certain scenes it's just really neat how he's doing it and i hope it transitions very well when the full picture comes out it looks like a movie that's definitely not going to be obviously it's not going to be a fun watch it definitely looks like it's going to be very very heavy but it definitely looks like one that i'll definitely be very in by and i definitely hope it will be that case when the movie does come out um and it is nc-17 as well so um we shall see how hard they push that nc-17 but it is a movie that i am really excited for and i do hope it's a movie that will definitely deliver that punch for me and that is why blonde is my number three okay so my number three is um well, I have to ask somebody a question. Hey, Violet. Hello. Don't worry, darling. <laughs> oh, trust me. I'm worrying, all right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, obviously, if that didn't give it away, then I'm sorry. Get your brain checked. Uh, don't worry, darling. Always looked fantastic to me. I love Book Smart. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, the trailers looked amazing. It wasn't until I started getting a little bit worried until they... <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I, I'm still excited to see the movie, uh, even though the behind-the-scenes is very interesting. I'm not big on, like, pop music, but Harry Styles is a great singer. Um, Harold. And I, what? Um, I love Florence Pugh as well. Pugh. Pew, pew, foo, foie. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, as you can tell, I'm very tired. At uh, the time of this video, I've been up since 4.30 this morning. So, um, and it's 10.15 right now. I can't wait to see this film. Uh, I'm definitely seeing it opening night. Once tickets go on sale, I'm getting them. However, going up to your ex-wife, girlfriend, during her presentation and giving her freaking custody papers was just, that was something. All right, let me just fucking fell. Wow. Uh, oh, Jordan almost died there, but my you number three. Yeah, 
my number three is a movie that I hope is going to stay released in, and I hope they actually have a trailer soon. It's uh, Disney's Disenchanted, uh, a sequel that shouldn't be on Disney Plus, but should be in theaters instead. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one when I was a kid, and I enjoy it now as a satire of what Disney was like at the time, and I'm looking forward to see how uh, Disney now makes fun of itself with this movie. And, uh, yeah, I hope we get a trailer because it's, like, going to be September by the time this video is out. All right. My number three is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Now, Knives Out was my favorite film of 2019. Yes, even better than Booksmart. And, yeah, I think Ryan Johnson is a fantastic director because – I love The Last Jedi, suck it haters. I'm excited to see Daniel Craig back in action as Benoit Blanc. Who knows how long we'll be there for more, because I know there's a third one, because he's no longer Bond, as we know. And the cast for this one is great, because we got Edward Norton... Dave Bautista, Kathleen Hahn, Janelle Monet, Ethan Hawke, just to name a few. And I know this was like filmed in Europe, and I think it's going to be set there as well. So I'm very interested to see how this one turns out. And a little unfortunate that it's Netflix instead of Lionsgate, like the first one. But hopefully, I can still see it in theaters. And yeah. Alrighty, my number three is The Whale. Um, now, literally, I believe today, uh, the release date was announced uh, for this, so um, I was able to put it on the list, um, thankfully. Um, I think, now, we, ha we don't have a trailer or anything for this movie, except for a few stills and the plot synopsis, really. Um, but everything I've heard about this movie sounds incredible, and really the main driving force for me about this is Brendan Fraser. Um, I've been hearing so much about his performance already, and I just, I can't wait. Um, Renaissance! Exactly, we're fucking getting the Renaissance, baby, and I, I can't wait. Who for wants a new Wii? Ah! ah! Um, and I can't wait, um, I, I just can't wait for this guy to make a comeback, man. He's always been one of my favorite actors, and, um, it, hearing the stuff that I'm already hearing about his performance, I can't wait to see it. And, of course, of course, Darren Aronofsky, he's a great director, too, so, um, this just has the re uh, recipe of, um, being a great movie. Um, I can't wait, um, until we get a trailer for it. Um, yeah, this movie sounds incredible. Um, I, I can't wait for it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why it comes in as my number three. My number three is also The Whale. I pretty much agree with everything uh, Double Nine said. Um, Brendan Fraser, from what I hear, is incredible. I'm so excited to see what he could do. And hopefully, like, hopefully it turns into like an Oscar nomination or something. Um, I they do like Darren Aronofsky. I love the wrestler of Black Swan. Um, and yeah, I'm ready for this Brendan Fraser comeback. My number three is Don't Worry, Darling. So, um, a couple people already talked about the behind the scenes uh, drama that's been going on. So, I'm going to just be only focusing on the film itself. I think the film itself looks absolutely incredible. I love the trailers, I'm a huge fan of. Lawrence Pugh. I think Harry Styles is a very talented individual. Uh, in terms of Olivia Wilde, I really liked Booksmart. Um, and this looks so different than Booksmart. So I'm excited to see how this one turns out for that reason, too. Um, what really had me hyped, though, uh, even before the trailer came out, is that Olivia Wilde said there are three movies that inspired Don't Worry Darling, um, Inception, The Matrix, and The Truman Show, all three movies, which I think are perfect. So, um, Given how great the trailer is, hearing that as inspiration and just the cast and just the movie all around, I'm, I'm really, really excited. I believe it's going to be showing in IMAX as well. And if that's the case, I'm 100% seeing it in IMAX because it really looks like one of those movies you have to see in the theater. 
And um, I love how secretive the movie looks, too. I mean, you kind of get an idea of what the movie's about, but I bet there's a lot more going on um, in the movie. So when you watch the film, uh, you'll be surprised. That's what I think anyway. So Don't Worry, Darling is my number three. All right, T. This is where it gets really all the top three. Oh, my God. All righty. So my, my number three is, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. I've heard different ways you pronounce this, but Babylon, Baby One, however you pronounce it, it's the new Damien Chazelle movie um, that is probably going to win Best Picture. Uh, and uh, listen, uh, at the beginning of this year, listen to the beginning of this year, I finally watched La La Land, actually with the Tiger Dude uh, himself. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, and uh, I, you know, ever since I finally watched that film, I've just like, and I've always, I've, I think Whiplash is like one of the best films of the 2010s. But like just finally watching La Land, I was like, wow, like this guy just is is such an amazing director. And I haven't seen First Man yet. I'm sorry, Phone but I will watch it at some point. But this one here sounds like his most ambitious film yet. Uh, it's de it's definitely going to be his uh, biggest in scope because this film is going to be over three hours long. Um, I also don't I don't know how true this is, but I also have heard rumblings that there might be like an NC seventeen cut. I don't know how true it is, but like I've heard like rumors about that. So I'll just see if that's true or not. Th this film just sounds fantastic. Um, you know, we've had a lot of films come out, you know, like decades, throughout the decades of like, you know, like the transition from like, you know, silent Hollywood to, you know, the talkies, like, you know, we've had like Singing in the Rain, Sunset Boulevard, you know, just to, you know, give some examples, like, you know, the artist. Um, but but this one, I, I'm interested to see how it tackles kind of like that, like transition period. Um, and, you know, when you have like Tobey Maguire playing Charlie Chaplin, for example, like, I mean, like, it's going to be interesting. And it's like just that part, you know, right there. Um, and the cast also, I mean, uh, again, like because uh, this cast is massive. Uh, I believe the lead is someone uh, the actor's name is Diego Calva. I hope that's pronounced his name right. But the rest of the cast is insane. They get like a Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Gene Smart. Uh, it'll be a wild uh, flea. And we even have Spike Jones in this movie. Uh, who is like my favorite of all time. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, and yeah, no, um, I'm really, really excited for this. Uh, and it's going to be an exciting addition to the award season. And uh, it should be coming on December. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's why it's my number three. And I cannot wait. Woo. Hey, Andrew, do you got to take a number two? <laughs> uh, no, nah, I've been holding it pretty well. Okay, well, that's what's next up, folks. Number two. Remind your kids, licking doorknobs is illegal on other planets. What the fuck? <laughs> that was the cultural reset this universe made of. That made my ass wet, not gonna lie. My number two is a movie I've been looking forward to for basically going on a year now. And it's crazy that we're just a few months away from its release. It is Pinocchio. And of course, if I have to be specific, it is the Guillermo del Toro one. Uh, yeah, um, I am all up for Guillermo del Toro giving us a different take on Pinocchio. The stop motion in Pinocchio, just mwah, chef's kiss. It honestly looks just so beautiful. Love the stop motion. Love the voice cast here, too. You know, we got... We got Ian McGregor here. We got Ron Perlman here. We got Tilda Swinton in here. Many more here, but just to name a few examples right there. And I'm just all up for Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro to direct the stop motion film because, like, he's definitely someone that's, like, made for uh, directing something that's in the stop motion form. So I'm excited that we're actually getting one. And, yeah, he's just, I think, one of the best visionaries we got right now. Even if his storytelling doesn't always hit, I can't deny that visually it's always on point, his movies. So... Pinocchio, there's not a lot I can really say because the marketing has been very secretive, which is good. I'm glad they're not giving away a whole lot of the story, at least so far as we're recording this. But just from everything I've seen, from the images, just from the cast, and obviously the talent involved, I mean, that's honestly all I need to really get excited for something like this. So that is why Pinocchio is my number two. I Honestly, can't wait for it to finally come out. Uh, my number two is... What is my number two? Oh, uh, my number two is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. 
That was terrible. Um, I was, like everybody else, uh, like most people are saying in this, I wasn't that excited for it originally. Like you said, the behind-the-scenes stuff had me kind of worried. Um, that teaser took every worry I had, crumbled it up into a ball, threw it out the window, jumped out the window with that ball, lit it on fire, and then said, fuck you. That movie, this movie looks freaking fantastic, and I cannot wait to see it. It looks super emotional. Um, I'm super excited to see who's potentially going to be the new Black Panther. Question mark on that one. Um, and all right, so one of my favorite composers is Louis Gernson, and I can't wait to hear his new score for this film. Um, he's always been one of my favorite composers, so I'm super excited to hear new music from him. Um, yeah, so yeah, my number two, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Jordan. Sorry, my mom's here. You want to say oh, hi? Shit. Uh, okay, friends. now I feel bad. Oh. Hey, Miss Farrell. Um. <laughs> Meanwhile. So, how's life? <laughs> um, pretty okay. Pretty okay. <laughs> Anybody buy Top Gun yet? Not yet. Um, if I do, probably not until Black Friday. Uh, yeah, I think we're good now. Okay. So, uh, that was pretty wooden, but not as wooden as my number two, which is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's very cool to see someone like him tackle stop motion animation as someone who's very passionate about that medium, how we don't get a lot of those movies these days. Funny enough, we're getting two stop motion animated movies this year with this and Window and Wild, but I've been wanting to see this passion project that Del Tro has claimed this is. I'm interested to see a more faithful interpretation of the legend of Pinocchio. And the stop motion animation is just god tier, you know. So yeah, that's my number two. My numero dos is Babylon, the new film from Damien Chazelle, director of La La Land, which was one of my favorite theater experiences, and also Whiplash and First Man are also great films. From what I've heard about this movie, that it's in Hollywood in the 20s, and just sounds really great to me. Yeah, Violet pretty much said a lot, but I'll say it again. Like, I love Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt, and those are like the two big stars here. So, very excited to see what they do. And of course, we got Tobey Maguire's first non Spider Man post boss baby role as Charlie Chaplin. And also, we got Samara Weaving and Olivia Wilde in here as well. A lot of people, actually. I heard this film is, like, really insane. I heard, yeah, it might get NC-17, and it's three hours, so I'm very interested and intrigued. All righty, my number two is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, yes! you damn right. All right, um... Yeah, uh, I I have heard about this movie for quite some time. I know this has been like a big passion project for Guillermo del Toro for years now. Um, there was even the point where he thought he was never going to be able to make this, but it's coming out, and I think it looks fantastic. Um, the animation looks stunning. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, like al already, just like, some of the most beautiful animation I've already seen. And I'm just basing that off of trailers. Um, I can't wait to see how it is in the full film. I can't wait to just see what his envision is for this story, honestly. Because we've had a lot of renditions of the story of Pinocchio. But I think this quite possibly could be the most uh, unique one yet. 
and um, I'm very excited to see what he brings to it. And you got my boy Ewan McGregor in there, and um, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, hear him in this. I'm very, very excited. Um, so, yeah, I mean, also, you know, you got Ron Perlman, Tilda Swit, and Kate Blanchett. Has a very, very great cast. Um, so, yeah, I think this movie looks absolutely fantastic, and um, I can't wait to see it. So, yeah, hell yeah, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is my number two. And my number two, um, also two, is um, Babylon. I was kind of hesitant in putting this at number two because uh, we haven't gotten a trailer yet, and I usually want to see a trailer before giving my, I guess, final thoughts on excitement. But um, honestly, you know, it didn't really matter because I love Damien Chazelle, loved La La Land, loved Whiplash. Whiplash is like one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, First Man was really good. And I just, ever since First Man, I was like, I just want to see another Damien Chazelle movie. Yeah, I'm excited for this. So my number two is The Sun. Um, the Sun looks incredible. We got the teaser yesterday, and um, it's not that long, but from what I saw, it looks like one of the best movies of the year for sure. Now, the reason why it's so high on my list, other than that teaser, is because of how much I love the director's previous film, The Father. Uh, for clarification, for those who haven't seen The Father or don't even know what this movie is, they're not related. They're not sequels despite it it may seem like that, but they're not related. Um, so yeah, I, The Father, I think, is one of the best movies of the 2020s so far. And this has a very different story, but it looks really compelling. Hugh Jackman is coming for that Oscar. Um, I guess it'll be between him and Brendan Fraser. I'm down for either one, because I really like both. But um, yeah, this looks uh, very emotionally compelling. It looks so well acted. And if it's even half as good as the father, then I think we are, we're in good hands. So the son is my number two. All righty, my top two, my top, okay. So this is like the main reason why this top five has been the most challenging to put together because either of these could be number one, depending on the day. But um, I have, I've kind of decided uh, to, to, to rank them. So here we go. So uh, my number two, is the Fablemans. Um, so this film, um, you know, like I like like the movie that got me into this is like a this is this is gonna be very like rambly at this point. I'm so excited for this song. So like the reason like I'm into film and the art as much as I am is because of Spielberg. I think that was third or second grade. Um, I had to do, I think it was third grade. I had to do a project on um on like some like famous person ever. There was like no one on the like like the like the list we got uh, sent that like I wanted to do, so they're like they're like okay because I was like on like an IEP or whatever, and so they're like they're like okay like you can like pick someone if it helps you with your anxiety or like something like that. So I'm like okay I want to do Steven Spielberg, so I did a whole uh, project on Spielberg. I like have read multiple multiple books about Spielberg. I own multiple books about Spielberg. I know like a lot about uh, his life that he has you know shared uh, you know his upbringing, and. His upbringing is one that is very emotional. Um, it was not easy, um, especially, especially some parts of like his relationship with like his family members. And when he was a, a, a young teenager getting into film and stuff, this film is semi-autobiographical as some people explained who have talked about this film previously. I feel like some directors, like when they get to like the end, the end of their career, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, like wish this, on like you know Spielberg obviously but you know he's he's getting up there in age so his career it, you know in terms of like directing is probably gonna you know like it's coming to its end and a lot of directors when they get to this point in their career like they'll make like a film like this that's like reflecting on like the past times of their lives or make something like really like personal like for example like the last like movie like Igmar Bergman did was uh, Fanny Alexander which was like sort which was, like similar it was like kind of semi hierarchical but like that's so influenced by his upbringing when it was so challenging um and from what I've read this film like is going to go into detail about that like especially you know for example like like um his father and stuff in like America post like World War II like the idea of like getting into like cinema this is forming a tiff in a few weeks um and in the program for it you know it says that this is Spielberg's most personal film and it might be his most like emotional film and I very much honestly believe that he is one of the best directors of all time. 
and seeing him make a movie this vulnerable and personal at the stage in his career, I think is really fascinating. And for me, as someone who admires him so much, and I owe such a, uh, a debt to why like, I'm into the arts as much as I am, I'm really, really anxious to see this film. I can't wait to hear other reviews from Tiff. We have not got a trailer yet. Um, we've only got like, one still in like, that program. Um, and it looks beautiful already. Uh, the cast in this is absolutely amazing. Paul Dano, Michelle Williams, uh, Seth Rogen, uh, which is going to be amazing. Uh, and of course, we do have uh, David Lynch, um, who I will not uh, say who he's playing because a lot of people do not know. But if you want to know, look it up because it's very interesting. I will say also, I think I usually do not do this with movies that come out on holidays, but this is going to go worldwide on Thanksgiving. And I think I'm going to go try to see it in theaters on Thanksgiving. I usually don't do that. But this movie, I think, is going to be the one time I do make an exception. Uh, and that's, that's why this film is my number two. So, woo. Okay, everyone. We are finally at that point where we talk about our number one for the season and the rest of 2022. Here we go. <laughs> the fuck? Was <laughs> <laughs> that? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Was that Al Horford? Did I see yes, that? It was. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Oh, yes. that sexy motherfucker. That was yes. extremely <laughs> sexy, man. Okay. So... My number one, it's not a film I expected to be number one for the longest time, which is interesting. I always knew it was going to be in my top five, but I didn't really know it was going to be number one. But honestly, the more I watch the trailers and the more I really think about what's the movie I'm like the most excited for, honestly, my number one is Don't Worry Darling. And... Obviously, I'm not going to be someone that lets the behind the scenes affect my anticipation for it. You know, if it's a good movie or even a great movie, I'll definitely admit it. But if it's also not a very good movie, I'll be really honest about that, too. Cinematography looks great. Definitely already looks very different from Olivia Wilde's directorial debut, Booksmart, which I'll admit I'm in the minority with. I'm not that crazy about book smart but i do think she could really up like her directing style with this one florence Pugh looks like she's going to be really great here um chris pine also looks great here harry styles is admittedly the only one i'm kind of like unsure of. i can't tell if it's be good or not from the marketing so he's my only like reserved element but everyone else i think they look very spot on to be honest it just looks like there's going to be a lot of chaos that really goes on. I love how mysterious, honestly, both trailers have. Both of them have done a very good job of keeping things very secreted. Or you really don't know where the story is going to go, how it's going to unfold. And some of the very um, odd imagery that's in the trailer, I wonder how the movie is going to lead up because there's certain shots where I'm watching it going, oh, wow, I can't wait to see where this movie is going to lead to like this shot or this shot, or this shot. Just so many fascinating shots that I'm really looking into when I'm watching the trailer. It's just a movie that I can't really talk a lot about because like I said, it has been very vague, but that's what I love about it. Uh, just looks great on a directorial standpoint, on a cinematography standpoint. The soundtrack, you know, I don't know if she's going to go for more of a soundtrack like she does. There's going to be more score here, but whatever she decides to do, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what she does just to create this mood, the overall environment. And yeah, honestly, I just truly can't wait for Don't Worry Darling. While obviously the behind the scenes stuff, it's unfortunate, but like I said, I'm not going to let it ruin my excitement for this. I think this could be just something truly awesome. And I'm definitely hoping for the best with this film. So that's why... It is my number one for the fall winter season and the rest of 2022. Okay, so <clears throat> this year has been just nonstop for sequels that I have been waiting years and years to see. My number one for the rest of the year is Avatar Way of Water. I cannot express how much I cannot wait to see this movie. 
the first Avatar is one of my favorite movies. I absolutely love it. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters in 3D, blew my 12-year-old mind away. Um, I can't wait to see it again in theaters this month. It's safe to say this month now in 3D, IMAX 3D this time. It's going to be insane. Uh, James Cameron's probably top five directors, in my opinion. And I knew once the film kept getting delayed, I was like, look, I'm, I'm losing a little bit of patience here, but I can wait a little bit, too, at the same time. I don't mind. I'm not going to give up on it. I was one of the few who were like, yeah, just give it time. Avatar's going to be great. I mean, it took 12 years between Titanic and Avatar to come out. And, I mean, they're both great movies. Uh, I mean, this year alone, I, uh, this year alone has been just, I, I like, between a Avatar and Top Gun, I think it's just, it's just an insane year for long-awaited sequels. So I'm hoping that continues it. Teaser is absolutely amazing every time I see it. It just blows me away. Um yeah, so number one for the rest of the year, Avatar 2, Way of Water. My number one most anticipated movie of the summer is Avatar The Way of Water. <laughs> summer. I said season. You said summer. Did I say season? Did I say summer? I'm not going to lie. I thought he said, he said summer. summer. I I thought he said summer on purpose. I thought he was just joking. I, I thought I, 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 I didn't season. I didn't know you were saying it by accident. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> I thought I said season. I don't know. But no, my number one is Avatar: The Way of Water. I've been waiting for this movie since I was ten fucking years old. You know, uh, to all the naysayers that go, nobody cares about Avatar two. Shut the fuck up and eat my ass, okay? You know, no, thank you. Everyone's watching this movie. The industry is watching this movie. Whatever James Cameron's got packed in that movie, every industry member is going to want to suck that off and then claim that they were. You know, the, the teaser trailer is like, it's fucking art, dude. You know, um, I can't even tell if it's animation or real. That It's that fucking good, you know. And I get this return to the beautiful world of Pandora. I get to see, you know, new characters of a, a newer world you know and it's uh, it's it's like a fever dream it's almost unreal that we're here we're, we're finally getting avatar 2 we're finally getting uh our way to the way of water and yeah that's my number one dude all righty we are at the grand finale of the year pretty much and Yes, my number one most anticipated film of these last four months is also Avatar The Way of Water. I remember seeing this film in IMAX 3D when I was nine years old. The visuals were stunning as hell, and I haven't seen the movie since then, but I just got this from Best Buy last week for 15 bucks, so I'm going to change that soon. <laughs> Like, I know there's been diehard fans and some who are diehard haters and stuff, but yeah, this move. Yeah, as soon as I saw the trailer in front of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness in the same IMAX theater I saw the first one in, actually, I was just sold. And just going back and re watching it in a. IMAX is just mind blowing. I am very excited to see this. Like James Cameron is clearly a director who likes to take his time with movies cuz Ben it was 7 years between the first two Terminators and it's 13 since this which some of it's due to COVID. The teaser is one of the best of the year next to nope for me and yeah i we're probably gonna get another one but i'm fine with just that one and yeah hearing stuff like kate winslet holding her breath for seven minutes is just wow so yeah the movies Alrighty, my number one um now this was a movie I didn't even know existed until about like I think like last week. 
um, we were all in the chat and we were just all talking and whatever. I think it was, I think Violet and Timothy were talking about this. And so I go up to look up the movie and I looked up who was directing the film. And that's what immediately shot this up as my number one. Uh, my I'm number one. This. Uh, my number one is Mo- Moon Age Daydream. Um, this is easily my most anticipated movie for the rest of the year. So, if you don't know, uh, Brett Morgan is directing this, and uh, Brett Morgan directed uh, Cobain Montage of Heck, which I consider my favorite documentary of all time. And I think if there is one director that I do think can just bring the world of David Bowie to life in this way, it's him. And just by the trailer alone, it already seems like he's just bringing us into the weird and just just ominous world of David Bowie already. And I'm excited as hell to see this. I might even try to... um, if it's playing near my IMAX theater, I'm even going to try and see this in IMAX because this is going to be one hell of an experience. I'm fucking ready, man. Like, I am excited for this. I think this has the potential to be something extremely, extremely special. And I just think this looks absolutely incredible. There's no doubt there's more. There's a movie that um, I'm more excited for than this. I'm glad I found out about it because I am extremely, extremely excited for this. And I think it has the potential to be something quite spectacular. Um, honestly, it just looks like a Marvel in like every single way. So, yeah, uh, Moon Age Daydream is far and beyond my most anticipated movie for the rest of the year. Wow. My number one is uh, The Sun. Um, the Father it was my favorite movie of 2020. Uh, in the the short decade that we've had, or the short time that it has been in this decade, I should say, um, it's like one of, if not my favorite of the decade, one of my favorite movies of all time, to be honest. That's saying a lot, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, the sun was always going to be something that I was going to instantly be excited for because um, of how much I love the father. But throw in the fact that. You know, Hugh Jackman, who is my favorite actor, is in it. Like, my excitement level is through through the roof. Um, I really I do feel like this is Hugh Jackman's time to win an Oscar. I hope that's the case. That would be pretty fucking sweet. Um, and, yeah, that teaser yesterday, as short as it was, uh, looked amazing. And I just can't wait for this movie. So my number one is Babylon. Um, Other people have talked about it already, so I won't spend too much time on this one. But Babylon is my most anticipated movie for the rest of the year. Uh, Damien Chazelle is one of my favorite directors. I know he's only made three movies, but he's that great enough for me to just be instantaneously excited for whatever movie he's going to direct. And Babylon happens to be that upcoming movie from him. So uh, the premise sounds great. I heard a rumor that it might be Damien Chazelle's version of Wolf of Wall Street, which um, is more than enough to make me absolutely hyped to see. And um, the cast is great. Uh, Tobey Maguire as Charlie Chaplin. I mean, come on. that That's going to be great to see. And I don't have really much else to say because other people talked about it and pretty much covered what I was going to say. Um, so I will just leave it off with this. Both Margaret Robbie and Samara Weaving is in this movie. And if they're not sisters in this film, that's got to be a wasted opportunity because they look so much alike. So uh, Babylon's my number one. All righty. I've been waiting 13 years to talk about this movie right now. All righty. Listen, I don't think like many people are shocked this is my number one. But like, you know, like it was a big debate between this and films. But number one. Is of course Avatar: The Way of Water. I don't think anyone's. Woo! Yeah, Avatar: Way of Water. It's time with yeah, it yeah. This is one of my most anticipated films of all time. Um, but my top, both my top, like this is film are some of my films of all time. But like this one, like, like, like this film, like the first one came out, 
at such an important time in my life in terms of art and stuff. Like it was a few months after uh, where the Wild Things Are came out. And that's one of like my top five favorite films of all time. And then like the after came out. So like the wonders of like a young kid that I was back then. Like because I was this came in 2009. So I was like, oh gosh, like I was like six or seven years old. Like it just like the wonder of that and just like the the epic fantasy of it, just the spectacle. Like I. When I was that young and just like the like the hype of it, like just finally experiencing that game with Avatar is so exciting. And that teaser, when I saw it uh, with our, our amazing uh, friend Adam Haskell and I'm Max for Doctor Strange, Wonder Chris Madness, um, I almost cried. Uh, it is one of the best teasers I've ever seen, uh, just given the fact of how like much like expectations I had and just how beautiful it looked. Yes, there are some things about this movie that I'm already like, okay, maybe we'll have to see how this works. You know, for example, like, you know, Sigourney Weaver, like, you know, playing like uh, Jake and Terry's daughter. Like, we'll see how that is. Regardless of like, the fact it's taken us so long. We finally have it. And James Cameron is one of my favorite directors of all time. Um, the, the best visionary in the history of film, my opinion. Just a man that puts his all into his craft. Um, and it's just pioneered and championed so many just like, milestones in film and also you know shout out to him for you you know um having so much amazing female representation throughout the decades that he's been making films you know avatar is not like my favorite james cameron uh universal film um that'd be terminator 2 but it just like i just think about avatar is just like it, it's just so personal for james cameron and just and just like it, it combines everything that makes James Cameron who he is, just like the romance of it and like that, like this the wonder of it. Now we have like the water aspects, which I guess y'all you know that's what that's James Cameron's thing, basically. Um, you know, the combat stuff and just like uh, it just the technology, just just so much. Listen, like even with all the delays, I've been like, listen, like I, I'm still just as excited. Uh, and it's finally here. And you know, um, as you know, people have mentioned, like it feels like a, a freaking fever dream. This movie's finally out uh, in a few in a few months, and I can't wait. Um, and I've seen that trailer multiple times. And like uh, you know, Diego was saying earlier, like this trailer in IMAX, like IMAX is like a very very big part of my life. And uh, you know, so obviously I'm kind of biased here, but just like that trailer in IMAX, especially in IMAX 3D, is so good um and yeah no, so i cannot wait and uh yeah that's why it's my number one and uh i'm so glad i could finally say that after all these years so woo. okay everyone that was our top five anticipated for the fall winter of 2022 of course it's always exciting doing this with my guests and of course i'm gonna let everyone give their goodbyes one by one starting off with mr timothy anderson Thank you, uh, Tony, for having me back once again. I was so happy to be back. I was so happy to talk about films with you guys some more. Uh, can't wait to be back for whenever we have another one of these. Probably the uh, the anticipated for next year. Well, uh, after the many fuck ups tonight, because uh, it's not a top five without fuck ups uh, for me. Uh, you can find me on my socials uh, right here or wherever Tony places these. Um, you can also check out my newest feature film, Silent Barry Tells the Wings of Love. Yes, it is a feature film. 40 minutes counts. Uh, you know, I worked a lot hard on it. It's kind of like an 80s VHS tape. Uh, if your <clears> grandma <throat> had it with, with her. Uh, and yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to next year. Uh, hopefully 2022 doesn't end uh, in an explosive way. And looking forward to how 2023 goes. All right. It's always been a pleasure to be here. It's always a lot of fun to hear y'all's lists and say my own as well. And, yeah, you can find me on the Twitters at Henzo Ewing. You can find me on Letterboxd. It's Henry Ewing. And credits. I'm here to see MF Doom. Um, oh, uh, my ears. Oh. But, um, yeah, uh, thank you, Tony, yet again for having your boy on uh, an anticipated video. I very much appreciate it. You can find me on the YouTubes 
film fan, oh five nine nine, the Twitter's film fan, oh five nine nine, the TikToks film fan, oh five nine nine, and uh, yeah, the Lurboxes film fan, oh five nine nine. So yeah, um, thanks again, Tony. This was a lot of fun, and uh, hope everyone has has a has a good one. You know, live it up. Go get. Where's your OnlyFans? I don't know. This is always fun to do. Had a great time. I'm tired. Good night. Uh, thanks, Tony, for having me on here. I had a good time. Um, it was great hearing all of the movies you guys are excited for uh, the most. And um, hopefully for the next top five, I'll be asked once again to join because I will certainly be there. But um, thanks, Tony. And um, have a good night, everyone. Thank you, as always, for having me on, uh, Mr. Tag Dude. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I'm glad this top five is out of the way because it's been causing me a lot of anxiety. Uh, and it's finally done. It's it's over with everyone. Uh, and uh, it's now time for the best time of the year. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, uh, with that, love to everyone. Uh, Y'all know where to find me. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so woohoo. No, I don't know where to find you. What are you talking about? Only fans, obviously. Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At least Violet has an only fans, unlike you. Bitch. Yeah, exactly. Come on. So yeah, if you're interested in checking out all of my guests' channels, the links will be left in the description down below. And of course, if you want to follow me on my social media, I got Instagram, I got Letterbox for my movie activity, I got Serialized for my TV activity, I got Facebook. Um, I don't use it a whole lot, but I got TikTok as well. So if you want to follow me on TikTok, go crazy. Um, and yeah, this has been awesome. Always a joy being here with all of you. You know, I can't think of a better time than the be here with not just my guests but me amigos too all of my special amigos right here so of course this is tony aka 22 tiger dude here with jordan timothy andrew film fan henry violet and diego wow that is a mouthful and don't forget that all of us will always have Tiger power, tiger power, tiger power, tiger power, baby, baby. Woo! Bringing the 22 and 2022, baby. Woo, we're getting to the end. No way. Ah, my toe. <laughs>